nobody, nobody, there is nobody like our God, right? There ain't no, no man, no name, no thoughts, no, no candy, nothing is, is, is sweet, as loving, as, as giving, as, as just wraps his arms around you and always tells you, he, you is, uh, there is nobody like our God. Amen? Amen? Do you believe it? There is nobody like our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, FX, how y'all doing today? All right. Y'all doing good? So we started, we're in, what day is this? Nine of 2022? Today the ninth, right? Thank you, honey. And uh, so how's it going? Everybody, everybody still on fire? You still hot? You know, God is still moving. You still believe in him, right? You, you still feel it, right? In your shundai, right? It just is there. I'm trying not to use no churchy words, but anyway. Um, and so, you know, we, this is our time, right? This, it's cold outside, but this, there's a fire on the inside. There's a fire on the inside. That, you know, they, they would say, shut up in your bones. That makes you want to dance a little. I'm not, about to, I'm not about to act up, I don't think. Um, it makes you want to shout. It makes you want to cry. And what I'm telling you, what I'm encouraging you is that do it all. Let it, when, like when your, when your song or that thing comes on that just makes you happy, that gets you glad, and you just let it all hang out, that's what God is saying in 2022. Let it all hang out. Let it all hang out. Don't keep nothing in reserve. What you hiding it for? You know, when you bring company to your house and you, and you, and, and you want to feed them, you know, you start taking out a little of this and a little of that, and then the fellowship get good. And you're like, we done ate up everything, so let me go see what I have in store, right? And God is saying, I'm not holding nothing back from you, so don't you hold nothing back in your life either, right? Let it all hang out, all right? Ah, let me see. I like to make sure before I start with the formalities that I'm just listening to God, um, and we're going to do some things today. You can be seated. You can be seated. God is good. I'm going to move. Hopefully, I don't get nobody vertigo with me moving around or anything. Um, but I'm excited to stand before you today. My name is Gary Bullock. I'm the executive pastor here. Um, and Pastor Andre called me up. And you know, when you see, I saw Andre Butler on my phone, and I looked at it, and I said, I'm not preaching. That's exactly what I said. So I'm like, I'm not calling him back. He let me, I said, oh, Lord, let me. So I sent him a text. I'll call you back in 15 minutes. I'm still walking around like I'm not preaching. I'm not preaching. I was like, Tina is preaching. This is so, because this was on Wednesday. And so got on the phone, and he said, well, I'm going to move Tina up to uh, Wednesday, and I, I want you to do Sunday. So my first response was no. I was about, you know, like, but I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I, I thought it. I was like, let's see, my wife is leaving town today. I could be like, I'm going out of town with her today. I won't be here. I, okay, don't lie to the pastor. But it, it crossed my mind for a second. So I'm just, but I am glad to be here, and I humble myself before God because I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love everything that you have done and, and grown and learned, and this church is growing um, this is, if you believe God has connected you here or connecting you, listen, the, everything's not perfect anywhere, but I'm telling you, if you believe God has settled you here, um, then you, you, you be here. You do what God has said. Because you, 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 when you walk out his plan, when you stay in his space, when you stay in your lane, and I'm borrowing this from, from Bishop Davis, th there's a yellow brick road that he wants you to walk down, um, er, all the blessing. It's so much blessing there, and if this is part of your yellow brick road, I encourage you, and, I, and as, as it's been a blessing to you, I want you to, to make sure you share with your friends. Again, not perfect place because it's full of people who have flesh, but we, we love you. We, we love you. We love you. We love you and appreciate you. Amen? Amen. All right. So uh, let me first pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people who are wonderful, kind, lovely. They're the best of the best in this place, in this ministry where you have called us, this church, to do this work here in the city of Detroit um, that not only is impacting this side of the city, but the, the entire city. Lord, we thank you for the, for the nations. You said if we ask, them, ask for them, you'll give them to us. 
But God, I thank you that we, in this time, like our, our nation, is, is our, our sphere, the people that we see and touch, Lord, we're calling out their names right now, God. And so we thank you as we enter into this season of prayer that, God, you show us some things, you help us do some things, Father God, that we can walk down that yellow brick road of your blessing, your anointing, and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is good. So if you weren't here on Wednesday, um, Sister Tina did a good job. And if you were, she did a very good job. And it, it, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's something, one of the scriptures she used, because um, one of her points was that, you know, God said you're enough. Um, and so we're, we're going to talk about prayer today, um, because we're starting our 21 days of prayer Um, And so one of the things that um, hit me, and I didn't know I was speaking on Wednesday. No, he called me Thursday. Oh, see, y'all, it was Thursday. Um, Or was it Wednesday? See, I'm losing track of time. But anyway, when we were sitting there on Wednesday, one of the things that stuck me when she said that you you are enough is that sometimes we, um, and this is my intro, so just enjoy this. Um, Sometimes we look at people and deal with people according to our ability, our knowledge, our, our skills. Um, and so I'm using, as I was getting my sermon together, having two pages of notes. And it look, it look, it made sense to me. Now, my wife is an A personality plus. She looked at it and she said, let me talk to you for a second. <laughs> I was like, what? And she was like, she was drawing lines, like, where are you going here? Um, and she did it in love and kindness. And listen, I, 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 I function um, at my highest and best when, when I allow her to use her gift in my life. And I think she functions as well when I use my gift in her life. And that's, that's that relationship. That's that covenant. Um, and it, it, it's not just to marry people. There are, there are people in relationship. Um, if you work with Renita around here in hospitality, there's a gift in there that helps you do your thing better. So you don't have to be married, to it, but, but there's an opportunity when you let the anointing that's on you and on whoever you're dealing with help each of you guys, right? Iron, the word says iron sharpened of iron, right? Um, so so that point that she uh, said was that you're enough, right? And so we sometimes we will look at people and say, you know what, they could do this better. Well, if you're an a administrator, you, they, you, they probably could do it better but they're doing the best they can at the moment. Um, and so it really dawned on me that we, we sometimes, you know, we're so good at what we do that when people don't do it as well, we sometimes kind of look at them like, mm, they could do better. They're they wasting their time. I mean, we make all kinds of judgments. And so um, I wanted to read this scripture um, because it really rung to me about how we... Look at each other, and and I'm I'm prefacing all this to say because because we're because we're going to be praying, and and my message once you hear it is is I don't it's not rocket science. Um, some of the the prayer team gonna be like I I be talking about this all the time, and some of you who are new to the faith are gonna are gonna, gonna get some things. But the purpose of the message is really to put you in a position that for these 21 days you are committed to doing something that's easy and comfortable. We want you to pray. I, I, am, I am fully persuaded standing here that without prayer, I would not be here. My own prayers, the prayers of my mother, the prayers of my wife, the prayers of my children, the prayers of people who know me, the prayers of people who don't know me. Somebody at some point is praying for you. And if you have any situation in your life that you do not think is exactly how God wants it, right? then you need to pray. But you need, it, it needs to become a part of you. It needs to become a lifestyle. You know, so, you know, how many ladies, how, how, often, how often do you go to the hairstylist? I'm, I'm starting with ladies. Some go once a week, some go every two weeks. There's some brothers I know that they fade. As soon as they, they see a little beady bead on their fade, they are running to, the, uh, to get that fade tightened up. Like when I used to have hair that got faded, like I didn't go that because this stuff don't grow back like that at a certain age. Like, it started start not doing it. But you do, you have habits. You do things. Tina gets three or four Starbucks a day, right? <laughs> like, it, it, if she don't have a Starbucks, we all, like, go get her one. Um, but this is a habit, and, it, and it's part of who she is, and it's part of it that helps her, her do this. this. Your prayer life, you praying, you being committed 
to whatever that, whether it's one thing or six things, walking that out, putting your mouth on it with God is the key to your success. When we pray, we, the word tells us we should, we should, uh-oh, we should already stand knowing that God is going to honor our petition. But sometimes we can't do that because of what? What, do you, what, what, what stops us from going into it like that? Sometimes it's our flesh. Sometimes it's our mindset. Sometimes it's not even believing um, that God really wants to honor my prayer, right? And so what, one thing I just want to settle before I get into is that God has made you righteous. So you, so you can go to him. No, I, we not, that righteous doesn't mean that you're a perfect person, that you have no sin, that you didn't tell somebody off, that you didn't, didn't, didn't do something on time when you should have, when you, when you had plenty of time. It simply means that God has looked at you and psh, the blood has covered you. So you can stand before him on any given day and be like, you know what, God? Because you said I'm your righteousness. I didn't, this is not my words. And so you can stand boldly in front of God or bend on your knees or in your car driving, and you can pray to him and believe that he answers. And that's, that's, that's the first key. Let's, let's remove all that I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. Let's remove that, that doubt, that fear from our lives and walk in just that God is a, is a loving God. His, you know, salvation is, a form, is, is, is his, his grace towards us. So, so even if you're in here and you're not saved, and you say, well, I'm not saved, so he's not talking to me. He is talking to you because salvation is for the sinner. So I, I, I've been saved, versions thereof, for, since I was about 14. So I, come on now. <laughs> Listen. I don't do signs. I'm a Gemini, but my wife be like, ooh, who, who coming this day? Which, who, who is this coming this day? Um, and so, so I, I know that, you know, I, I, you know, we have our good days when we know we saved and we be popping on it. And then them days you be looking in the mirror like, whew, ooh, I'm glad, he's, I'm glad salvation is given to me because otherwise I'd be a hot mess, right? So, so, you, so, I, so settle it because when you go into this season of prayer, the, the devil is going to come at you, and he's going to tell you everything about what's wrong with your life, why God's not hearing your prayers. You know, like if you have kids and you done told them, don't do this, don't do this, and you'd be like, God, they keep doing it, right? Even if that's you with anything in your life about God, he's still saying, okay, I still made you. I knew you was going to keep doing this the whole time. That still don't say you, you can't go pray for Aunt Edith, or you can't, you can't say, God, I need, I need a better job. You still, your petitions are not stopped because you think you're not worthy, because God said you're worthy. All right? Do you, can we all, that's, that's our base point. I want you to believe that when you ask God for something, that you go before him, that there's, no, there's nothing you can do to separate and stop him from acknowledging your, and, and the word says that the angels hearken to the voice of his, his word. So when you speak it, they are commissioned to do it, right? And so we hear the stories like, well, it's, I've been praying for this five years. Well, I don't know, sometimes we got to get a little stuff in order before that manifestation, but God does it when, at, at the point you prayed and believe. It's done, right? It's settled. So, at some point in a, in a little while, we, gonna, I'm, I'm, we all going to exercise ourselves together. We're going to pray a little as a body. And so as I'm talking, I want you to think about these, over these next 21 days, what are two or three things that you really need God to bust open for you? And I'm not telling you it's going to happen in the 21 days. But we're laying the groundwork because sometimes when we start something now, like if you've gone to college, that first class, that first math class that you, that you if you like me, took twice, until you got that degree when you thought you had graduated, and then they told you, oh, I'm sorry, you got like six more credits, and you done walked across the stage, and you done told your parents you got a degree? <laughs> and then you had to go back, right? And then you, fiance at the time looking like, boy, you, 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 you got to do something. So, so I, I, dude, this is four and a half years, like I think I'm done. So, so I laid the groundwork for today, right? So God has been good to me. I've had some great opportunities in my life, some that I went after and shouldn't have. That's why you got to pray, because I'm about to come out of loader bar job. Like, if you have been to loader bar, you can call it, you know, jacked up. But, you know, sometimes we do some stuff for a whole bunch of the wrong reasons. And then we, well, did God even get you there, or did you do it? Because I'm telling you, our mouths, our desires, God respects your will. 
So you know you're not, I, listen, I went after this job here. I don't think, well, I already told my boss that I was leaving. So I, I, was, at, I was in a job and I'm getting there. I'll keep my clock going because it's going to make me stay on time. And um, I don't know why I really wanted the job other than it was going to, I knew it was going to be a bump in pay. I was going to be the boss. All right. So, but everything that's glitter ain't gold, right? So I took this here job. Have I been happy in this job in two years? Like, no. And uh, it, it's, it's, it has, it has, it, it, at one point I said, it, and I said it has sapped all the anointing out of my soul. That, that's just how, how bad it was for me. But I, I realized six months in, you did this. God ain't put you, you did this. And now, now you're here. And now you got to figure out how to get out and when to get out. You know, but God gives you a way of escape. Praise the Lord. He, he is setting me free. Um, and, and, but I'm t- I don't have no other job right now. I'm, I'm, but I done quit. <laughs> so I want y'all to see, say, you can call it foolishness. Like, yeah, my daddy, they, they boy, don't quit no job till you get another one. I, I, for my own soul salvation, I had to let it go. And I'm not saying that's you, but I'm saying that when we make decisions in our lives that we want to say it's God because it looked good in the beginning, and then once we realize it, God wasn't in this, and, we, and you been pay, pray for me, I need help. Don't nobody see the suffering I'm going through? You walking around looking like you should be covered in sackcloth and ashes, and it's your fault, right? And isn't that when we feel the worst? And, and that's when you feel more disconnected from God. I did this. This is my fault, right? That's why God loves you. That's why he sent Jesus. It don't matter that you did it. He's saying, okay, step out the way. That's why I say whatever's in that bag, that stuff you holding back, it's time to throw it on the altar. Leave it on the altar. Because, listen, we're not perfect. He knows we're not perfect. But our, our work and our walk daily in him moves us closer to that point where we live that life. And, and so now I'm going to start my because uh, I only got 25 minutes praise the Lord that was the opening so you, you get these good things for free right all right so prayer right and it's going to be a simple message it is the key component to knowing God it, it really is think of your best friend cousin you love the most even your parents it's, it's yeah they raised you but at some point when you become an adult it's conversation. Like, you guys are talking about things. You're finding out things about your parents or those that helped raise you, people that, that you might not have known when you was a young person. You know, and so, like, my mother, um, she played basketball. And so I was like, okay, that's good, you know. But, but not talking to her brothers, like, she played basketball. Like, she was a baller from the caller. I mean, she, they was like, you could not hold her down. And she, um, opportunity for college scholarships, and she, um, she had, a, had an accident, um, and so she, she lost, lost vision. She lost an eye. She had a prosthetic eye. And that changed her life. And so her confidence and everything else kind of w- went in a different direction. So she didn't go to college. She got married. Um, my father sweet-talked her. He, she high, high, yellow. He, he nice and crispy like me. I was like, he... I mean, I was like, you had some game, because, you know, you see the picture of your mom. I was like, my mother was fine. Like, woo. Um, and, and so now they, you know, had this family, and it worked out. But, it, but when I talked to her about it, she said, I don't regret a day. She said, I don't regret a day of my life because this is what God had for me. She said, I, had to, I got past that trauma, but realized he still has something for me. And so, but that comes from her and, and her relationship with God. She got to a point where I, I had to know him. And you have to pray. You, spending time praying, reading the word, those are the ways you get to, because that the book is about him. It's about his love to you. So if you don't read it, you're going to be, be missing some of the good, the good parts, right? So prayer is the key component. And so what is, what is prayer simplified? Prayer team, holler at me. What's the simplest form of prayer? What's the simplest? Pray. Just, but what is it? Conversation. It's conversation with God. It's literally just like I'm talking to you, talk to God, right? And so, and you see, you know, we try to keep professional Gary going on up here, but he, he be sliding into Eastside Gary, right? So, but God, God will, God will listen to you. He wants honest conversation. So, if, so my wife hates liars. She 
Hey, say what you, ooh, she says she do too. Like, she would rather you tell, <laughs> all right, now, that's how you work with me. But, right, so, hates liars, right? She keeps telling our kids, like, Holy Spirit going to tell me, so don't lie to me. Be grown and own your stuff, right? Be grown, own your stuff. Um, and so, I was, I was, I told her I was going to be back in, at like, two hours. I didn't add my whole list, and it was six hours later. And she was just sitting there looking. And, and so it was, I literally lied. I knew I wasn't going to be back in two hours. And she said, I just need you to tell me the truth. And so I had this whole kind of, I was like, she said, I'm lying to her. I don't lie to her. I don't lie. But I was like, you did lie. You knew you weren't going to be back. So I brought, I brought cake. I brought like three different types of chocolate. I, brought, I was all kinds of bright. Went to the corner store, got some cake slices. Just, I'm like, you know, here, honey. See, I was out doing this for you. She was like, uh-huh. And then it wasn't even good, right? So... <laughs> Just wasting my money. Um, so prayer is simply talking to God, conversation. It is, I said, open and honest and candid. Candid conversation with God. Candid. I am tired. I did. I don't want to preach. I don't want to do this. I, I, I did. I said it till I shook myself. Um, it's, it's a key ingredient to you building that strong relationship with God because you gotta talk, you got to talk to him. If you, if, you know, we, I think we, when we do marriage counseling and things like that, we hear it's communication. Like there's just something about us as people sometimes, we just don't want to tell you. Like if you, you know, like I, we encourage you at some point to come up here for prayer and you'd be like, well, what's going on? And it's not for you to be running out your whole business, but if you are feeling depressed and you got a situation, but you say, you know, I don't know, I just don't feel right. Okay, come on. You know what's wrong with you. Like, we, let's talk. And, that, and that's how you have to be with God. You just have to tell him because he already knows. So it's not like you're keeping a secret from him, right? He's right there. So our first scripture is going to be in Philippians, the fourth chapter, the sixth through the seventh verse. I wanted to do my hair, so. Um, okay. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. His peace. So the word is simply saying, if you come to me and tell me about your situation and trust that I heard you, then you can walk away from that, situ that prayer in peace. Does that mean that he did it right then? Will you tangibly see right soon as you walk away from that prayer that this situation has resolved itself? Now, there, there's, some, there's sometimes that you will. But the peace that he's given you is knowing that you have went to the one with the answer and he says, I'm going to fix it. So you get to walk away and not worry about it. So when they talk about picking back up your troubles in old school, like we done talked about this 10 times, you done prayed about it 10 times, but we keep picking it back up. There's a point where we forget to let the peace part take over, right? You, you, once you done prayed about it and you're like, okay. And I'm not saying you, you won't pray about something a couple times, but at some point in those prayers, you're going to catch that God heard me. You're going to convince, you say, I'm fully, he heard me. And you're going to stop praying about it. And then you're going to go into Thanksgiving. Like, I thank him that my solution is there. Right? But that's the peace. That's how you can walk away and still have the storms raging all around you. Because you know he heard you. It, it, and when I say, when it says, Everything, tell him everything, everything, everything. Because part of that, that release is you saying it out your mouth. So it took me a while to say, I shouldn't have took this job. I did not pray about it long enough. And then when I realized when there were opportunities prior to me being two years in to get out, I still didn't leave, right? So I kept myself in this kind of perpetual state of being upset. Um, the Passion Translation for the same one says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. 
So we got to let that go. Be saturated in prayer throughout the day. Offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. How many of us have more than five responsibilities in our lives? Or four? Yes, we, we have multiple things. Job, work, home, kids, cousin, mama, all these things. Friends that you should have dropped a long time ago, but you're still taking care of. Um, so we all have these things that we lay on our plate that are our responsibilities. We pick up things. We do things. And even around here at the church, we say, once you, once you pick an area, we want you to serve good in that area. We don't want you in five or six different areas. Because what are we doing sometimes? We're trying to fill, our, fill time where we're busy. And then when we get busy and then become overwhelmed, we, we're creating a problem. First, it's saying, you know what? God just told me to do one thing, right? And I'm going to do that for, until I get or I have time to do one thing, or I don't feel pressure to do multiple things, because that's how you get pulled in different directions. That's how you get pulled. If, if, if you're in the lane right now, if you're an at-home person, whether you're male or female, and your job is to take care of that family, then, then take care of that family. Pray for them, do whatever you gotta do around the house, you're going to work. If that's where you are right now, because like with young kids, it, it's a lot. And, they, and I don't know, I don't, they don't feel like less work at 26 and 22 right now, but they, it, it, it's, it's a continual thing. So if you know that's your wheelhouse, then, then, then be that. Stay right in that lane because that's where you're going you're gonna to be able to flourish. You know, um, the, the one thing I like about, uh, so we have two kids, and I always say, I, 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 you had them. So there's a, there's a part when they come out of you that gives her intuition that I don't have. I think I've said this before. And so I have to lean sometimes on what's on the inside of her because I will go, woo, they be like, would you please, did you, are you sure he's our daddy? Like he act nothing like nobody. I mean, like I, I, I know I can get a little riled up. I want, I want you to fix it now. I want you to do it now. And sometimes when we go to God, that's how we feel. I want you to do it now. I've been waiting for you to do it. And God is saying, I, there's a learning that goes with waiting. And we're, we're just, sometimes we get in that space where we're just like, eh, I need it now. If it don't happen now, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go solve it myself. And that's exactly what happened to me. I couldn't wait for the, the real opportunity, so I created one, and I created myself a whole lot of, whole lot of stress. Um, so your prayer is simply a solemn request to help, for help, right? So you can, we, we, we hey, help me, Val, pray for me. I need, we, we acknowledge that we need somebody else to intervene. And when you go to God, the maker, then he got all the answers. So why, what, 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 what do you get from being and having a, a, a regular prayer life? Three simple things. You spend quality time with God. And so Mark 135, we're going to do that one. Okay, again. Okay. Mark 135 simply says, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and, th- and there prayed. So, so he Jesus got up early in the morning. Now, for some of us, that's like not even a thing. Like Gary's not early in the morning. It's, it's not his that ain't my anointing. But I'll find a time. But she, you say for sure. Um, I find a time. I find a place. And I have an agenda when I go to God. The second purpose of regular prayer in your life is really just to get direction from God. Psalms 25, 4 says, show me the path where I should go. O Lord, point out the right road for me to walk. Lead me. Again, these are simple conversations when you don't know what to do. If I had asked before, he would have told me to say no. Right? So... When you don't know what to do, and you've done everything that you can, why not go to the person who can give you the answer, who can give you direction? Because again, that's part of the piece. You might not 100% know the next five steps, but you know walking away, 
that you have put, you have put it out there. You have, tied, you have linked up with the one who has the answer. And that's, that's the key. It's not doing it in our own strength. It's not doing it in our own power. It's not doing it with our own thought. We create, again, I'm using myself. I created turmoil in my life over the last two years because I didn't, I didn't listen to God properly. Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And so clearly I did not acknowledge him first. I saw the check and I said, oh, bet. I'm, 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 about to have, I'm, about, I'm about to be balling a little more now. I'm about to, about to bring up, you know. I got this lady who, you know, she, she do okay for herself, but I'm, I'm, I'm holding it down. I'm paying the rent or something, right? You know, it, it, it really was, it was motivated a lot by the fact that I just felt like I needed to make more money. I, I, I deserved it, but uh, what, what I took to get it, what I went through to get it over these last couple of years is not worth um, any of the checks I've received. Um, and then to access the power of God. A, a regular prayer life helps you access the power of God. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5, 16. The earnest prayer of a righteous pers- person has great power and produces wonderful results. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So where are we to s- settle that you're righteous because God did that for you? And so now you can go to God, and again, our, sometimes our prayer are about, you know, sp- very specific things like, God, you know, I, I need direction, or I need this. And sometimes there, there's a need for power in your life, right, that you need, that you need his, his super on your natural to get you through a season or a time, right? And so you, you don't know how to flow in that if you're not spending time with that. So if we use the example of my daughter, who is so, so blessed of the Lord, she, she has currently access to one of our credit cards, and she be a swiping, right? And, and the wife has made sure I don't see the alerts because I'm going to be like, what is she doing now? And she's about to graduate from uh, graduate school, so she's preparing her graduation look. Um, but she does it without without thinking. She didn't call and say, did y'all pay the bill? She didn't call and say, did y'all, did, have we had any turmoil in the family I need to know about? She just out there swiping. She needed, she going. That's what God is saying to you. I, the power just, like, it's here. Access it. What do you need today? Oh, you need healing? We'll call for healing. What do you need right now? You need peace? Call peace down. He's saying it's all right there. Like, his, his bank account is full. He got plenty. He ain't holding nothing back. But we're not accessing. So that's, that's kind of about knowing what your, what your rights are. So th- again, I'm, I'm making this simple because when you pray, I want you to go in knowing that he's going to do it. Yeah. He's going to do it. He's going to fix it. I'm, I'm, he's going to fix it. Don't, don't, no. listen, you can come find me. And if it ain't fixed like he fixed it, then we're going we gonna to pray a little more, right? But God, he's, he's the one that fixes these things. So access to power. And so that, and that access to resources, that access to everything that God has for you. He's not, again, he's not holding anything back. He's not holding anything back. All right, so we're almost time to pray. So quick tips for beginning your successful 21-day journey. So we already talked about Mark 135 says establish your time. So again, whatever, be committed to a time. If you're saying my time right now is my driving to work and it's a 15-minute drive, then please don't have on WJLB or Nephew Tommy or, or listen to Shirley Strawberry in the letter, you know, or, you know, flipping through, you want to get that, that bounce as you, don't, let's listen. <laughs> listen, if that's your time, don't, and don't be like, oh, I got, I got to get off at the boulevard of 94 and you almost there and you be like, let me cut the radio off, I got to pray. You, you, you got to commit to doing it, right? You, if you say that's, that, that 15 minutes, that's what you do. And, and again, this is not prescriptive. It is about you creating a habit, something that you are committed to doing for 21 days. I, I mean, I stand here as, 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 as sure as I'm standing here, and here God said, if you give him these 21 days, he is going to show out on your behalf. He is going to show out on your behalf. He is going to show out on your behalf. And I don't want you to get 
And we talk about this and grow. I don't want you to get all bent out of shape if one, one day you do forget and you only hit it for five minutes on that 15-minute drive. But it's about being conscious that I made this decision because, listen, if I told you, uh, say, hey, who, who want to meet me at the Hermes store and who want to meet me at Louis Vuitton, I don't, think, I don't think it would be room for me to get to the back door to walk y'all there saying it's on me, right? It's, I'm saying it's on me. And so... If, if God is saying, I make that kind of commitment to you, all you got to do is show up. Like, all you got to do is say, God, this is my situation. This is where I need your help. Why wouldn't you take advantage of it? So establish the where. Like I said, it could be your car, Mark, still Mark 135, and have purpose. So if you are praying for that knucklehead child that God gave you, then, then let that be purposeful. Don't, there is, you, you probably got 25 things. Pick one that's the most important and roll with it. One that's going to have the biggest impact and roll with it. And, and when you pray, again, this is why, why I said this is so simple. It's not hard. Matthew 6, 7, 8 says, Don't recite the same prayer over and over as the heathen do, who think their prayers are answered only by repeating them again and again. Remember, your father knows exactly what you need before you even ask him. He knows before you ask. And when it says, don't, don't, don't get up there. And so if you've, you know, you've been a seen church, you, you've seen some preachers like, well, Father, we are now here in your glory. And as I'm standing here as this lowly servant, I entreat you to come before and let your power fall. I mean, this, just this whole dramatic um, make, like theater, like is they doing Shakespeare and and. There's, 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 some, there's value there, but what he's saying is, just get to it. Like, yo, Jesus, um, uh, I, I, I lied to my wife and she's mad right now. I, I, I need a little restoration. Uh, I, I, I've been late to my job uh, about 22 times and I think I'm about to get fired. And you know if I get fired, then I got to go live with my mother and... That ain't God, and I think then my wife, she for sure going to leave me. Like, you, the, I'm, when I say make it simple, make it, make it, make it so you know what you prayed. Do, do you leave your prayer knowing this is what I asked for? This is Because that way you can track it, right? You can write it down and be like, I asked for this. This is what we're believing for. Like, oh, check it off the list. It's, it's here. That, that's how simple he needs you to be in the next 21 days. If, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you just, I don't want to say do it because I'm your boy, but if you just do it because I asked you. <laughs> like, just do it because Eastside Gary asked you. Because, listen, I, I see y'all face. I don't know your names all the time. But you know I'm going to walk up to you and be like, so how many days did you pray this month? No, I ain't going to do that to you because that, that, I don't want no condemnation. No kind. I don't want you to feel bad that you, you missed out. Or try, and when you see me come and go the opposite way, don't do that to me. <laughs> don't do that to me. Because you know I be... I'll be looking. But I want, I want you to just get it in here. Like, if it's just when you're brushing your teeth, you got to do that. I, you have to do that every day. So while you're doing that, say your prayer. While you're in the shower bathing, morning or night, when it, if you didn't get a chance while you're driving, say your prayer. If you trust God in this season, the list of things that he's going to accomplish for you you're going to be blown away. You're going to be like, I could have been doing this, right? And that's the part about uh, authority and, and, and all those things. It's like, I could have been doing this. Like, like I said, my daughter is not thinking about what the bill is. She's out there getting what she needs, right? Food, whatever. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. These are, these are your necessities. These are things that are going to give you that peace. These are the things that you're going to pray about over these 21 days. They're going to set you up for the next couple of years on stuff that, you know, I'm talking about mothers who have daughters who they believe in a good husband for, that you want that ramsack or whoever she's dealing with now to get out the way. These are the things we're going to, we, we encourage you to pray about, Right? If you, listen, we, we, we're not playing. Don't be playing with your family. Don't be playing with your blessing. Don't be playing with, the, with, with power and not, not accessing it, right? Like, why, why walk around depressed? I'm, I don't got nothing to be depressed about. I'm not, because I can't change it, right? 
I can't change it, and it's not unto death. As long as there's breath in my body, as long as I'm walking and talking, I'm like, okay, God, we got another chance to get this done, right? We got another chance, another opportunity. It's right now. And God is saying, it's right now. It's right now. All right. So I've been talking. You've both been thinking of one or two or three things that you want to pray about, right? Where's my musician? There you go. Is my drummer coming too? I need all hands on deck. Jill, you got a microphone? Never know. Where's Jill at? She's hiding from me too. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So as we're sitting here, just, you got those things. And I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. And uh, we're going to stand. We're going to stand. I want you to stand up, please. And I, that's why I got us a little brighter here. I want to see your faces today. Um, and we're going to pray. Right? So you'll see some of the, uh, the prayer team walking down the aisle. And they're just reaching and touching in agreement with you. Um, for what you're praying. But I, listen, everybody in here who can hear me and online who can hear me, open your mouth and ask God for something. Don't stand there because whatever, this is new to you. Listen, if, you, if this is kind of your first time joining, listen, prayer, as I said, is simple communication. If I was working at the Wendy's drive through and you wanted some nuggets, you just like, can I get an order of nuggets? That, that is your communication. That is how simple it has to be. Because for you to walk away and, and hold it and ground it, it has to be something you remember. Like I can give you 25 more scriptures, but I said I gotta give you at least just the things I, I need you to do on the basics, right? Amen, so we're thinking about those things. We got wonderful music playing. Praise God. Praise God, amen. Is everybody in place? Amen, all right. One of the scriptures, 1 Peter 5, 6 through 9 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care, for he cares for you. So if that's you today, whatever that care is, I just want you to say, God, you can call it out if you want. You say, God, I, I cast that care out to you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Listen, you're going to, this is going to get so good to you over the next couple of weeks that you're going to be walking around the house making spaghetti. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, Jesus, I know you're going to fix it. Fix it, Jesus, fix it. I mean, that, that we're talking about we're going to commune with God this month, right? Amen. Um, pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and everything give thanks. Listen, I, I'm not saying that because you, you may be low on funds right now that you're giving thanks, but you're giving thanks, God, because you know there's a God who can raise you up, who has all money and power in his hand, so you ain't got to sit there and worry about what you don't have at this moment because you're saying, God, hey, I got bills to pay. I got kids to feed. I'm going to let you do this thing. Right? It don't, don't always have to come from the job, right? It don't always. God has ways of getting things to you that you have yet to see. He has ways of busting open your situation that you have yet to see. There is healing coming to some of your bodies and some of your some of the things that have been in your body and, and, and causing you pain, some that you've even inherited down the line through the blood of your, four, your sisters and your mothers. God is saying, I'm eradicating that right now in prayer. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. Listen, I'm telling you, if you, if you, if you know how to yell for your favorite team, when we start praying, you go boldly. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Boldly is with authority, with confidence that you know he's going to do it. 1 John 5.15 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, anything, he heareth you. Like I hear you hear me, he heareth you. And if we know that he hears us, your assurance that your God hears your prayer, if you know that he hears you whatsoever we ask, when we know that we have the positions that we have desired of him. 1 John 5.15, the Living Bible says, and we are sure of this, that he will listen to us whenever we ask him for anything in line with his will. And if we really know, if you really know that he's listening, if you really know he is listening, when you talk to him, when you talk, move your lips and make our requests, then we can be sure that he will answer us. Amen. You can be sure that he will answer you. Amen. Are you sure he's going to answer you? Are you sure he's going to answer you? 
Listen, I don't know if you know, but listen, raising your hands is just a sign of surrender. It don't mean you weak or nothing, but God is in control. So if everybody would just, for a favor to me, just lift your hands. God, we know you hear us. God, we know you hear us. God, we know you love us such that you gave us Jesus. And you, Father God, you wiped away our sins. So, Father, as we stand here today and prepare for these 21 days of prayer, I thank you, Father God, for miracles, signs, and wonders. I thank you for breakthroughs happening, God. I thank you for every lost child that a mother or father is praying for finds their way home. I thank you for every daughter, every young woman that's believing, God, for a good man, a good husband, that he shows himself. God, I thank you for every man that's believing for a good woman, that they show themselves. I thank you and our bodies are healed from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. God, I thank you that our footsteps are ordered by you, God. I thank you that no matter where we went before, where we're going tomorrow is where you have called us to go. God, I thank you for men who want to take care of their households. Increase, increase, increase on their jobs for our young people, God, and they're finding their way that God, that you speak to them clearly and in language they understand to show them the direction, show them their place to be, God. Lord, I thank you for our kids in school. Lord, we thank you for safety and health. Lord, we are so sick and tired of this virus and everything out there, but God, we trust you to keep us. Every day, you will keep us, God. God, and we know that you hear us. God, we know that you heard us. God, we know that your angels are going forth right now to do that which you have commanded. So, God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory and count it done. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God is done. Yes. 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 Listen. You need to say the enemy is defeated in your life. You need to say that he no longer has a stronghold in your life over your family, over your friends, over your fun. Listen, I don't care what they do when you get home. You keep saying the enemy is defeated in my child's life. That my, listen, I don't, there's learning disabilities are, bind them up. Bind them up if you have a child in school and they're saying this, they're, they're not enough. They are enough. They are enough. God, we, we just release that anointing on our parents today to lay hands on their kids. Listen, when they before they go to bed, you sneak in that room and you decree God's word over their bed. And when they sleep, they're going to toss and turn. But God is going to deal with them. These are our children. Don't play with your family. Don't let the devil have more authority than you. That's your family. However they got here, they're yours. They're yours. You have the authority. You have the authority. You have the authority. Call out jobs for your sons. Call out jobs for your daughter. You have the authority. Don't let anybody be stronger in your family's life than you. You have the authority. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just one more time. Everybody lift their hands. God, we thank you as a corporate body, FX Church, FX Nation Online. Lord, we, we surrender it all to you. Lord, this care, what we've been walking around, we will not walk in fear, but we will be smart, God. Lord, I thank you for every petition in this room that's been made on you as it lines up with your will and your word, Father God, that we watch and trust you do it. I thank you that there are habits being broken and habits being started, God. Lord, we'll daily open our mouth and give you, acknowledge you as our God. And God, we will trust you with our innermost secrets and our innermost desires. God, this is our time for us to walk with you in a way that we've never walked before. And I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for everyone who opened their mouth, everyone that has their hands elevated. God, I thank you for doctor's reports. Lord, the eradication of those illnesses, God, I, we're not having it. God, we say it is done, it is done, it is done. It is done, God. It, is, it will not ravage your body. God, we thank you, yes, for that healing. Restoration of relationships. Mothers and daughters getting along. Fathers and sons communicating. Father, we thank you for it. We, we're breaking down those barriers, God. You show us what we need to do next, God. Everyone in the sound of my voice, Lord, that you speak to them in a dream or a vision today, tomorrow, Lord, and give them that direction that it will hold onto their hope, that their joy will be full, God. God, we thank you. God, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we seal this prayer. And as a body, everybody says, amen. Glory to his name.